So share the slide first. Let me check this. Yeah, so hopefully the slide <coughs> is already visible in your uh, screen, yeah, in your laptop. So for today, I would like to continue uh, the course materials still in the electrical system in the chemical plant. Sorry, still in Bahasa yeah, for the title. So for today, I would like to explain regarding the real applications or the options for supplying the electricity to the chemical plants. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, this is the pattern of the electricity supply in chemical plants. Yeah, so uh, we have the many process plants which actually generate their own electrical power. Yeah, or we call it on-site generations. And some of the uh, plants also need to. Yeah, we call it kind of the import of the electricity in order to fulfill the demands of the electrical powers uh, that is needed. Yeah, for uh, operating the chemical process in in industries. Yeah. So for the on-site generations, we need to consider several parameters in this case. Yeah? So we have the commercial power source, which is actually unavailable, yeah? or maybe too expensive or not reliable. Yeah? So uh, it is actually preferable to develop uh, the own on-site generations for the electrical power in this case. The second ones that need to be considered is the process requires steams in large quantities at high temperature and pressure. Yeah, so that use steam can be utilized for power, power productions or, or we call it the cogenerations. Yeah. So we have learned in the in the previous uh, course materials regarding cogenerations. Yeah. The cogenerations commonly classified based on the fuel used, uh, such as we if you still remember. Uh, there are several uh, fuels that, that commonly used, which is gas turbine. Or gas coupled with the WHRSG yeah, or waste heat recovery steam generators, or we can also use the diesel engine. Yeah, so uh, by using the cogenerations, it will actually produce the we call it the multiple types of the secondary energy or uh, as uh, forms of the electricity or steam continuously. Yeah. And the third ones, the third parameters that need to be considered is the fuel. Yeah, it's available. In abundance and also low cost, yeah, because the fuels is actually act as the primer or the primary uh, uh, parameters that need to be uh, used here yeah, for generating the electricity in this case, yeah. Okay, so the power generator generators in the process plants are typically smaller, yeah, and then the commercial ones, so driven either by the steam turbine, gas turbine, or diesel engine, yeah, and. Uh, in industries, commonly also need, yeah, we call it the backup electrical power source. Yeah. So this is actually as a backup in case of the emergency, yeah, or or commonly used or needed to supply the power during the main generator downtime, yeah, because commonly we 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 have to do also the maintenance, yeah, of the primary uh, generators of the electrical power. So in this case. We need the backup of the electrical power to fulfill the demands of the chemical process in the industries. It is also a good idea to include the ready connections with imported electrical power supply yeah, in order to anticipate the future expansions. And the electric motor startup power draw is actually very important as well to consider when deciding on the generator capacity. Yeah, so in this case, we need also to uh, know yeah, what is actually generator capacity that is need to be. Uh, supplied here yeah, in order to uh, fulfill the uh, electrical power demands yeah, of the chemical uh, industries, uh, since it can actually potentially lead to a decrease in network voltage as well as the damage to process equipment. And the startup powers, yeah. So we need also uh, doing, for example, if you develop, if we develop kind of the new technologies or the novel uh, process here yeah, in, in the industries, we need to do the uh, startup, yeah. So the startup power of the induction motor can be actually need six until yeah four times uh, startup powers yeah uh, of the normal power or the synchronous motors in this case. Uh, so we need to consider the characteristics of the motor in order to design the generator capacity as well as the power load yeah, of the overall plants. 
So this is the typical examples of the power generators. Yeah. So in these examples, we have three different types of the power gener generators. The first one we call it the skid mounted diesel power generators. Yeah. With uh, uh, 50 kVA. Yeah. So the skid mount is uh, yeah one of the popular uh, method of distributing the yeah the uh, electrical power in this case. Yeah. Especially in industry. So we need just simply put the, the machinery at the point of the manufacturers and it will uh, permanently mount it in the frame yeah? or, or, or we put it in the, in the form like this. Yeah? So we can actually use it uh, flexibly. Yeah? This, the flexibility of, of the skid mounted diesel power generator is, is very uh, efficient yeah? to, to use it in the, in the industrial applications. Yeah? And the second ones we have the 18 megawatts of the biomass fuel. Yeah, so we use the biomass as a fuel to uh, for the steam turbine uh, power plant. Yeah, so these examples is actually uh, uh, developed by uh, Phoenix Equipment Corporations. Yeah, from from USA. So they use several types of the biomasses. Yeah, as a fuel. So they need to uh, we call it consider characteristics of the biomass. Yeah? So we need to consider, for example, the ultimate and proximate uh, properties of the biomass, including, for example, the moisture contents, volatile matter, fixed carbon, yeah? and also the, the elements consisting on the biomass in order to generate more efficient uh, uh, steam tur turbine power plant in this case. And the third ones, we, we have the general electric TM 2500 gas turbine generator pack yeah, with the capacity of the 32 megawatts. Yeah. So this is one of the world's most modular, uh, reliable, and also experienced mobile gas turbines because it can actually, yeah, the, the flexibility also in of this type of the power generator is actually very good yeah, because it can uh, flexibility move yeah, to, to the specific locations. So uh, this, it is actually reported that the efficiency of this uh, turbine generator pack is around 35 until 40 percent. Yeah. So and it is reported also this type of the power generators is are already installed is in 300 plus units installed in the worldwide. Yeah. Because uh, of of its flexibility and also with the high uh, power capacity in this case. Okay, so uh, the next one is regarding the commercials and imported electrical power generations. Yeah, as I mentioned before, the, uh, in some industries, yeah, uh, they can actually develop the on-site power generators. Yeah, and on the other hand, they also need to uh, need a supply from the commercial or the imported uh, uh, companies in order to fulfill the electrical demands. Yeah, uh, needed for the uh, chemical process in the uh, plants or, or in that industries. Yeah? So in this case, uh, many process plants here yeah, also fulfill the electrical power requirements from the commercial utility companies, or we call it imported from the outside of the plants. Yeah, and mainly for practically or operating cost reasons. Yeah, so we need to consider several parameters in order to uh, develop or, or to get the importing electrical power from the uh, commercials uh, uh, utility companies in this case. Yeah. So the characteristics of the purchase power such as we need to consider the available voltage, yeah, whether it's actually matched with the demands of the electrical needed for running the chemical process in the industries. Yeah. Second one is reliability of the power supply. Yeah. And the design of the main substations between the utility supplier and the process plants also needed to be considered. Yeah. For example, the system for load balancing between the power consumers and also the distance from the substations to the plant. Yeah. So uh, if it's actually too far, maybe it will not actually very efficient because uh, they need to transmit yeah, the electrical power to uh, our plant. So the distance between the substations and plan also is very important to be considered here. Yeah. The third one is the characteristic of the processing system in the plant itself. Yeah. So for example, we need to consider the effect of the voltage uh, fluctuations. So the voltage fluctuations can be occurs due to the output power variations. Yeah. So 
for instance, for instance uh, it's actually depending on the source type, yeah. the generator uh, generator characteristic, and also the impedance of the network. Yeah, in this case. Okay. And the second characteristic of the processing system that need to be considered is the power outage on the process. Yeah. Uh, we call it kind of the power cut or, or the power blackout, yeah, which is actually the loss of the electrical power network supply to, to the end user. Yeah. So uh, in this case, the examples of this cause, which includes, for example, the faults in the power plants. Yeah? So the faults at power stations. Yeah? For instance, uh, there's a damage on the electric transmission lines or maybe in the substations, yeah? or maybe there is a sub or, or short, short circuit, or maybe there is a, a cascading failure and also the circuit breaker operations. Yeah? So there is actually a lot of, a lot of uh, examples that can cause the power outage on the process. Yeah? So we need to consider about that characteristic of the, this processing system. And the last one is the power threading issues. Yeah, so power threading issues in this case, including the point of consumption measurements and unit of consumption, whether it's in KVAH or KWH. Yeah? KWH yeah? So for your information, and one KWH equals to the KVA multiplied by the power factor. Okay, so in this case, the power factor is actually very, very important in order to, to get to know the uh, units yeah, in, in uh, KWH. Yeah. So if, so in this case, there, uh, for, for the third uh, points for the power trading issues, then we need to also to consider the penalties on the power factor problems. Yeah. So if the power factor is too low, what is the consequence? If this one is too low, what is the consequence? Anyone can guess or answer? Uh, the kilowatt hour is also low, sir. <laughs> of course, <laughs> kilowatt hour will be low, yeah? Kilo will be low and the consequence of this is the energy, consum energy consumptions will be increasing. Energy consumptions increase which consequently increase also the cost of the equipments or installations yeah? okay so that's why the the power factor is very important yeah, commonly the power factors uh, ranging from 0 0.6 until 0 0.9 yeah yeah uh, usually it's less than one yeah so in between 0 0.6 to 0. 0.9 Nine, yeah. Values, yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, what you mean by energy consumption increase? Is it like to get one kilowatt hour, you need more energy? Is it something yes, like that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Consumes the energy in order to generate the specific output, yeah, in this case. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, no problems. Okay, so uh, the next. Next one, so this is the second uh, points, yeah, the second main points uh, for the commercial and imported electrical power generations in order to yeah, fulfill the demands of the electrical uh, in, in the industries. Yeah. And the third one uh, is regarding the electrical voltage in the process plants. Yeah. So the process plants typically use several level of the electrical voltage yeah, in order to handle the utility equipment, secondary distributions, as well as the primary distributions. Yeah. So the number of these levels will be depends on the size of the plant, total load, as well as the power requirements of the electric motors. Yeah. So the, there is actually classifications of the uh, uh, typical voltage in the process plants. Yeah. So it depends on the total loads. Yeah. So if the total loads up to 20 mega volt ampere yeah, or MVA in this case, it is suitable to use the transmission, transmission line voltage yeah or namely the voltage for power input line from the external supplier to the main substations, yeah? which is typically uh, around 23 to 230 kilovolt yeah? with the three uh, phase of the circuit electricity types. Yeah? 
And if the total load is actually up to 10 MVA, so it will be better to use the primary distribution voltage, yeah, while the others, yeah, for the uh, process equipments with major power loads, it is suitable to use the secondary distribution voltage. Yeah. And for the lighting or minor load process equipments and other uh, secondary or maybe tertiary uh, demands yeah, of, of the uh, electrical uh, power in this case. So we can actually use supplied by this voltage yeah, at 240 volts with one fair circuit of the electrical types. So this is the schematic, yeah, the schematic of the uh, electrical power substation. So we have the uh, incoming sub, uh, or we call this setup of transmission uh, substations, yeah. So it will receive the electric power from a nearby generating facilities and use a larger power transformer in order to increase the voltage for the transmissions, yeah. So in this case, we will actually receive, sorry. My cursor is not working on the left hand side, sorry, because it's cracked. Okay, so from here, yeah, so we can actually get the or receive the electric power here yeah, from a nearby generating facility. And after that, uh, there's actually a step down transformer, yeah, step down transformer uh, or transmission substation is actually located at the switching point in the electrical grids, yeah. And after that, it will actually distribute it, yeah, or using the distribu distribution substations, which is actually located near to the end users, yeah. Uh, and it, it will change the transmissions voltage to the lower levels in order to use it by the uh, end users, yeah. So from from these points, yeah, from these points, it will actually distribute it, yeah. Uh, and the power is distributed whether it's for the industrial applications or industrial use, commercial use, or maybe for the residential consumers. Okay. So this is just for your information how the electrical power substations is uh, distributing the uh, electricity yeah, uh, for the uh, several uh, applications, yeah, whether for industrial, commercial, and also for the uh, residential customers. Okay, so uh, this is the typical equipment of the voltage. Yeah, so uh, we have the uh, three main equipments, which is actually very important to to note. Yeah, so the first one we call it the electrical motors. Yeah, so the voltage of these electrical motors will be depends on the motor's capacity. Yeah, so the motors up to three hundred horsepower, it will use four hundred eighty volt voltage. Yeah. So the motors above 300 horsepower or up to several thousands of the HP, it will use the 2300 until 4000 volts. And the motors above 10,000 HP will use 13 kilovolts of the power. Okay. We have also another type of the equipments of the voltage, we call it as a transformer. Yeah. So the transformer uh, is uh, actually uh, used here yeah? In this case, for or reducing the investment cost, yeah, and one transformer can be used to produce uh, several voltage levels, yeah, which is actually required by the plants. So, for instance, in here, the electricity from utility company at about fifteen megavolts can be reduced to thirteen kilovolt and four kilovolt by having two secondary voltage points within one transformer. Yeah, so this is just for the examples how the uh, transformer is actually uh, being used in order to supply several voltage levels. Yeah. So the third one is, is the capacity for the plant expansions. Yeah. So the plant expansions may have to be considered when designing the power line voltage selections and power distributions and contract equipment specifications. Okay, so this is the example. So for example, the plan is planned for expansions within the next two years, which is actually up to production capacity that requires around 24 megawatt of the power. So at this 24 megawatt capacity of the electricity, uh, or uh, capacity of the powers, the electrical control equipments are not specified for 2,404, but we need to increase it yeah, for the uh, voltage capacity up to 60. Thousands and six hundred volt instead, yeah, because in order to fulfill the requirements of the capacity power, yeah. So therefore, therefore in this case, <coughs> it is actually preferable to select six thousand six hundred volt as the working voltage, yeah, in order to, yeah, again, yeah, fulfill the 
power capacity of the uh, fans. Okay, so this is the examples. Yeah, the examples of the electrical power distribution. So this is just for your information. Yeah, so we have several examples of the system of the distribution system in the process plants. Yeah. So we have the first one is simple radial system, expanded radial system, primary selective system, primary loop system, and secondary selective system. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for the simple uh, radial system, yeah. So this is the simplest electrical distribution arrangement. Yeah, because uh, and it, it is classified as the least expensive in terms of the equipment and initial costs. Yeah. So uh, because in this case, the simple radial system is only consists of the one inlet line and one transformer and, and feeder. Yeah, the system which uh, only suitable for small plants. Yeah, for for the uh, batch operations. Yeah. While for the larger plants, the radial systems can be actually expanded, or we call it the expanded radial system. Yeah, uh, as in the simple radial system, the power to a whole bench has to be shut down during the maintenance or, or repair. So, uh, in this expanded radial system, uh, it can actually uh, uh, become a backup. Yeah, if, if there is actually a maintenance. Or something, yeah, or or this actually a failures of the one utility sources, yeah. So it will not actually impact to the results in the total loss of the uh, surface, yeah, in this case. And the next one is the primary selective system, which is actually has two power sources, yeah. So the primary selective system, so this is actually the power sources, yeah, uh, for each transformer, so that any disturbance to the one of the source lines can be compensated by the other line, yeah. So it's actually. Uh, in this type of the uh, distribution systems will be uh, back up each other. Yeah? So if there is actually one failure or, or uh, in the source of the line, it will be compensated by the other lines. So in this config and in these configurations, the failures at one transformer cannot be compensated by other transformers or other systems similar to this is uh, we call it the primary loop system. Yeah. So for the primary loop system, this distributions arrangements consists of one or more primary loop yeah so in this case we can see that consisting still two uh, uh we call it two uh, power sources yeah where there is actually a loop yeah, in here yeah so the system is typically most effective when uh, there is actually two surface available from the utility yeah so uh, so the advantages of this uh, loop systems uh, is actually if there is actually a failures of the one transformer or the feeder, yeah. So if there is actually uh, uh, failures in this one of this one uh, transformer or or a feeder, yeah. So it it will not cause one part of the facility to experience a loss of the surface, yeah. So so the, you know, another feeder or a transformer can can uh, be as a backup or maintain without causing a loss of the surface. Okay, so this is just for for your information, yeah, regarding the uh, electrical power distribution system in the in the process plants, yeah. And uh, we have also we call it the one line single line diagrams, yeah. So in, in the plant electrical systems, uh, for for the descriptions of the electrical system distributions, yeah. So it can uh, be uh, uh, simplified. We call it as a one line diagrams. Yeah, which uses uh, single lines to represent a power transmissions, including three phase parallel lines. So the basic elements in one uh, line diagrams consisting of the power distribution system, process equipments, protection systems, co consisting of the fuse switch, circuit breakers, overload devices. Yeah. And the examples of the one line diagram is actually denoted as here. Yeah. So I know it's actually very, very complex. So the it's actually not uh, our main uh, task here yeah, to get to know about this uh, complex electricity distribution system. So uh, this is just for our supporting information yeah, or supporting uh, uh, fields yeah, to get to know about this uh, type of the uh, single line diagrams in the uh, electrical distribution system. Yeah. So uh, we can just uh, skip here yeah, for this, and we go to the examples here yeah, of the plant electrical system. Yeah. So uh, this is the 
uh, examples of the keramik manufacturing plant in in uh, Tangram. Yeah, so uh, we call it Arwana Citra Mulia. So if we have a look or search, yeah, whether uh, in in Google, so we have two keramik, uh, two large keramik uh, manufacturing in in Tangram. Yeah. So commonly for the uh, keramic plants, it consumes power from two sources. Yeah. So the first one is uh, imported power from the PLN, yeah? which uh, capacity of around 6,930 kBA. And cost P, or this one is we call it as a power factor. Yeah. We have already learned regarding this yeah? uh, in the last week uh, meeting. Yeah? So the power factor of, of this uh, system is 0 0.9 with a rate of the power is 4,300 megawatt hour per month. Yeah. And uh, the use of uh, this imported power is actually used to power uh, less critical process equipment such as wall mill, steel tanks, crusher, and so on. Yeah. And they use also the self-generated power yeah, so uh, self-generated powers means that they uh, make kind of the on-site generations to, to supply the own electrical uh, uh, demands yeah? or own electrical supply in order to fulfill the demands of this uh, uh, ceramic manufacturing yeah? with the capacity of this six multiplied by 1825 kVA. Yeah? Uh, where the generator is driven by the diesel engines with the 16 cylinders with a fuel consumption of 0 0.26 liter per kilowatt hour. Yeah. And then uh, this self-generated power is uh, used, of course, for the primary uh, uh, process, yeah? which is actually or, or we call it as a critical equipment such as blowers for the kiln, combustion air, and flue gas. Yeah? Uh, uh, ceramic product firings uh, will actually require a tight temperature control. So that's why in this case, the specific electrical demands yeah, with uh, uh, a specific capacity of the powers is actually need to be uh, adjusted yeah, in order to uh, get uh, the specific temperature controls yeah, to, to uh, run the process on the current manufacturing plants. Okay, the second examples uh, we call it the pulp and paper processing plants in in Riau. Yeah, so as as we know that the pulp, the pulp is uh, actually the yeah we call it the clean or using a wood based. Yeah? Or we call it as a, a renewables or biodegradable raw materials, yeah, because it can be used to produce a paper or tissue, yeah? or yeah. So this this type of the products actually classified as the sustainables sustainables bioproducts, yeah, sustainables bioproducts. So the plants uh, self-generates all power. Yeah? So in this case, there is no uh, imported uh, powers yeah? because uh, the on-site generations or the on-site generators that is developed in this uh, plants is already fulfilled the demands of the electrical uh, demands yeah? of, of this pulp and paper processing plants. Yeah? So the self-generation powers can be actually generated by burning the wood bark and also black, black liquor. Yeah? And the combustion of those waste biomass is used to produce a steam yeah? in which it actually turn drives to uh, uh, turbo generators. Yeah? So these plants operate gas turbine generators. Yeah? So there is actually two uh, fuels that is used for uh, the generators, yeah. So this first one is gas turbine, and the second one is diesel generators. Okay, so for the steam turbo generators, uh, the capacities is this, yeah, uh, mentions in this slide, with a voltage of 20 kV, with a power factor 0 0.85, with a three-phase three circuit uh, electrical types, with a frequency of 50 hertz, and this. Uh, electrical 
uh, supplied from the steam turbo generators is used for the primary yeah, primary process as well as for the backup power generations. While for the gas turbine generator and also diesel generators with a capacity of three times 4.5 megawatts and four times one megawatts respectively, it is used for the backup power generations. Yeah, with the fuels using the diesel oils. Yeah, for for both generators. Yeah, uh, for the gas turbine also the diesel generators. Okay, so with uh, abundance of the waste by mass. Power plants throughout the world typically produce excess electric power. Yeah, so in this case, it's not only fulfilled the demands of the uh, own electrical demands. Yeah, from from the pulp and pro paper processing plants, but they actually produce excess electric power, which is actually will be commonly sold. Yeah, to the utility companies. Yeah, for example, so that can they can actually sold the excess electric power to the PLN, for example, or maybe distribute it to other. Uh, other companies or other industries yeah, that uh, need more electric power in order to run the process. Yeah. So this is the uh, schematic how the chemical pulp, pulp process. Yeah. So as men, I mentioned before that the black liquor as a waste biomass yeah, in here that is actually used for uh, generating the power. Yeah. So the black liquor is separated from the pulp by using a washing process yeah so washing process in here will uh, transform the dirty pulp to the waste pulp by uh, producing a black liquor in here yeah so or, or the black liquor can be can be actually stated as the span liquor yeah from the process in which the pulp wood is converted yeah into a paper pulp yeah so in this case it's actually there is a process of removing the lignin and hemicellulose yeah? so and this one is to make the uh, products free of the cellulose fiber yeah? because as we know that the paper and also the tissue or a speciality of the paper yeah it will actually, uh, yeah, consist of uh, mainly or mainly consists of the cellulose. Yeah? So by removing this uh, constituents, yeah, lignin and hemicellulose constituents. Okay. So for the chemical pulping process, in this case, so this is uh, actually the schematic process. Yeah, overall schematic process of the pulp or chemical pulp process. Yeah. So it actually involves the dissolving of the lignin in order to extract the cellulose from the uh, wood fiber. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we call it the process, yeah, we call it as a craft. In, in the chemical pulp process, there is actually a process we call it as a craft process, yeah, where uh, they use kind of the uh, chemicals, yeah. Uh, or in this case, we use the caustic soda. Caustic soda or uh, sodium sulfide. Yeah. So what is this chemicals play roles? Yeah. So this is actually uh, play roles to uh, increase. Yeah. So for the caustic soda is to increase the pH. Yeah. In the pulping process of the fibers. Yeah. So the higher the pH of the paper fiber, it will actually cause the fibers to become more uh, smooth here yeah, and, and swell, which is actually important for, for the process or, or for the grinding process of the fibers. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of alternative chemicals the, that is actually used here yeah, for, for this kind of the process. But uh, the main message in here is actually how we can actually utilize the waste here, yeah, biomass, in order to become the sources yeah or the full so fuel sources for for the or for generating the steam and later on it will actually generate the electricity on on site generator yeah okay the third examples if is actually the cpo or crude palm oil mill yeah in in lampung yeah so uh, the cpo mills typically also self generated yeah so it's not actually use the uh, imported electrical power. Yeah? 
So they use the waste biomass. Typically, they use palm fiber or palm kernel yeah, as a fuel. Yeah. So the power generation capacity is usually in excess as well. Yeah. So it's similar with the one generated from the pulp and paper uh, plants. Yeah. So they they uh, uh, produce excess electricity. Yeah. So that's why in in here they they. Uh, uh, Okay, but however, in this case, the CPO mills are typically in remote locations, so the, the excess power cannot be economically sold to the utility companies here, because uh, this the CPO plants is actually uh, in the remote locations. Yeah, so it's actually different from the one uh, generated from the pulp and paper. Yeah, where they can actually solve the uh, excess electrical supply to. Uh, other utility companies or other industries there is actually need here yeah, uh, the electric ele electricity to generate uh, the or to fulfill the process yeah, of, of the chemical process in, in the industries so they use the steam turbo generator yeah and also diesel generator with the, this capacity yeah so uh, there are actually two uh, two steam turbo generators so one in service and one for the standby yeah so if there is actually a failure of the one steam turbo generators. There is actually one big up here yeah, to to make sure that the, uh, the electric electricity supply is still fulfilled, whether there is actually a maintenance or failures in one steam turbo generator. While for the diesel generator, yeah, with with this uh, capacity, 450 kVA, with a voltage of 400. Uh, to 230 volts with the power factor of 0 0.8 is play role for the backup power generation. Okay. okay, so this is a schematic of the palm oil process flow diagram, and this is the illustrations of the plants in 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 Lampung. Yeah, so uh, uh, in this process, it's actually, yeah, so we we use the crude palm oils and also a kernel, which is actually produced from the fresh fruit bunch, yeah, or or in Indonesia, we call it a tandan buah segar. Yeah. So uh, there's actually a lot of steps in here. Yeah. So consisting of uh, the sterilizations, there's actually a stripping, and also there is a digestion of the products. Yeah. And at the end, it will uh, produce yeah, the, in this case, the palm kernel. There's actually a crude palm oil yeah, at the end of the products. Yeah. And it actually process or, or produce also a sludge. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the the examples of of the use of the electrical system yeah in three different plants in Indonesia yeah so it's in the uh, chemical pulp and paper CPO as well as uh, the production is ceramic manufacturing yeah in, in okay so I think that's it yeah for the our last course materials for today yeah regarding the electrical system i just give you a reminder that tomorrow there will be the module exam yeah module exam three yeah module exam three uh, will be held tomorrow at the class time yeah from three to five yeah well so before i end up is there any questions from the students oh yeah let's have a photo sessions okay but Okay, so if you don't mind, you can turn on your uh, camera and let's have a photo session together because today is our last uh, lecture. Yeah. Wait, sir. I also want to ask you, what, yeah, yeah. what what are the chapters again, sir, for tomorrow's uh, OM? Uh, tomorrow's OM itu pak pak Wawan pak. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, for tomorrow's uh, module exam is electrical system and also i think the combined cycle is oh yeah a, yeah the, the the material after the second one the material of uh, is actually consisting of the cogenerations i yeah. think internal combustion engines yeah if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. and the electrical system yeah yep yeah, so there is actually three materials, yeah, three modules materials. Yeah. As usual, okay, I think so. you distribute the guidelines, the general instruction. I think yeah. uh, today, 
at the latest. Okay, let's um, open up your uh, webcam. Sir, for the topic, what about the gas turbine, sir? Is it also included? Gas turbine is already uh, given at second exam, right? If I'm not mistaken, I forgot. <laughs> oh, I think it was steam turbine, sir. I think gas turbine oh. is not is not given yet. But... Yeah, so I think uh, and it's not it's not examined in the OM two. So I think there will be also oh, yeah, that's, that's what that is, uh, included. Yeah. So basically, it's uh, the material after the second exam. Yeah. yeah. And there will be the final exam. So the final exam commonly for the remedial, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Is it correct? Yeah. So yeah. I think the results should be out before the before the, yeah. the final exam. Uh, exam so. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> but the time is very the time is very limited, right? I think we have this the, the final exam on on which date? Uh, um, on Thursday, right? Thursday next week. 9 of December. That's the final exam. 9th of December. 9th of yeah, but, yeah. from 12:30 until 3:30. Yeah. So hopefully all the results are already uh, will be can published be yeah, before published nine. before that. So I think usually the remedial exams is given. I'm not sure whether for all of you must uh, answer all of the questions or just Choose the specific modules. I forgot for the last year's exam. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it's only for the last spe uh, specific module yeah, that you want to get the better scores yeah, for the modules. Okay, everyone is yeah on camera already. Okay, Finn. Oh, okay, Finn. There are two gadgets here. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Kevin is always have to user id Mahindra, can you help uh, taking the picture or yeah of course but I'll, put, yeah, I will, I will take a picture okay so one two three smile okay once more one two three smile okay okay thank you for all okay thank uh, you everyone for all the best for this tomorrow's semester. exam yeah, all the best for the tomorrow's exam hopefully all of you can pass the exam as don't need to do the remedial exam yeah, for the final I mean. okay so yeah see you again thank you pahendra uh, thank you everyone bye. 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 thank you pahendra